current issues or today's issues? What did I say? Uh, hello, um, this is Tansy Thomas, and at least my name is Tansy Thomas. And uh, this program is about the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. We're going to discuss the relevance of his uh, message to, to uh, the current issues today. And my um, guest here, the, the uh, panelists are um, Hamza L. Nahal. He is the director of the Islamic Center of Davis. Uh, next to him is our former mayor, Ken Wagstaff. Hi, Tansy. Oh, hi there. <laughs> and this gentleman here is. Thank you for that gentleman. <laughs> I like that gentleman idea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is uh, Dick Livingston. He's a professor of ethnic studies. Hmm. And uh, would you want to say where? Or just you know, I try to keep that incognito. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And. Um, this uh, lady here is Hannah Biverstein. She is a member of Beit Havarim, Havarim, Jewish Fellowship of Davis. Mm -hmm. All right, great. All right, um, I have given these uh, our panelists uh, a speech that was uh, made by Dr. Martin Luther King in 1967. Uh, it's uh, called. Uh, Beyond Vietnam, a time to break silence. And um, it was uh, delivered April 24th, 1967, at meeting of clergy and laity concerned, that's uh, in caps, clergy and laity concerned at the Riverside Church in New York City. Uh, one thing about this um, speech, uh, I'm using this because it was referred to me, and I have to give him credit to Dr., uh, not Dr., I'm going to make him a doctor, Reverend Timothy Malone, who uh, was, was so taken by it. And so I saw that it would be very useful uh, for this discussion. Um, the speech, uh, in the speech, Dr. King expresses anguish and making this moral this decision, um, and, you know, to speak out. It was very difficult that to speak out and make a declaration of uh, being opposed to the Vietnam War. So, um, and it was, he was quite anguished about it because um, to, it sounds so unpatriotic, and he knew that it was going to be trouble. Um, and, of course, the communist scare was going at that time. So it's a, a very, very uh, uh, um, poignant discussion uh, of uh, his anguish and, and, and he reasons why he had to um, make this declaration, uh, despite he knew what was to come. And, and, uh, and he was concerned about that this war was going to um, increase the suffering of people, not only in this country, but abroad. He, he's uh, concerned of um, the impact of U.S. foreign policy, support of uh, dictators, uh, 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 qu quashing the dreams, uh, you know, of uh, people not only here in this country but abroad for peace uh, and, and a, a fair and just war and human rights, all of those kinds of, of concerns, and. Um, uh, he was concerned about the denial of freedom, and uh, and he explores uh, and very very th thoroughly. Um, uh, uh, he gives uh, very uh, uh, forceful arguments uh, of why this war uh, was uh, so cruel and and it, how destructive it is to all humanity, not just to the people in the U.S. Uh, all right, um, I uh, believe this uh, speech uh, speaks to uh, concerns uh, that uh, the panelists have, uh, as I understand it. You bet. And, <laughs> and so I uh, would pose a question I'd like for each one of you to individually uh, um, discuss 
uh, how this uh, uh, Dr. King's anguish, all of his concerns, how it relates to the things that uh, you are concerned about. And so I will uh, start with, um, I'll start with you since you're in the first place. I'll start with you, uh, Hamza. Okay. Uh, well, I would like to uh, greet you with the Islamic greeting, first of all. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Mm -hmm. May peace, blessing, and mercy of God be with you. Uh, my name is Hamza al Nakhal. I came from Egypt in 1969. I've been resident in Davis since that time. And uh, I came to study for a PhD, and I finished my degree uh, by 75. And uh, now I have three children here in Davis, and they all went through the Davis school system and university. Uh, two of them graduated, and one of them her way. I'm also involved with the Davis Islamic Center. And I'd like very much to thank Tansy Thomas for inviting me to be part of this panel. And uh, I'm really honored to be uh, here with the distinguished panelist. And uh, uh, I, I think uh, activities such as this today, where the community come together to discuss issues of concern and open dialogue, is a way to finding solution and making resolutions. As I said before, I came in 1969, so I came past Dr. Martin Luther King. But back in Egypt, when we all followed his steps, we all followed his movement, uh, because he stood up against his own government in matters of, 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 uh, of war. And he stood with the poor, and he stood with the oppressed people. And, and he was really, uh, he was a hero. To us, he was a hero. So uh, Dr. Martin Luther King, by any means, is not only an American hero. He's an international hero. And, and we're really proud of him. And I, I look up to him all the time uh, for his courage and for his uh, braveness. He, he was just an outstanding person. And uh, on the occasion of Martin Luther King Day, one cannot but reflect upon the man, his ideals, and what he believed in. This is because the very things that Dr. King fought for a few decades ago are coming back to haunt us again. Perhaps this is a way that his legacy lives and how he is remembered and appreciated when the struggle itself is alive to remind us. It's, by, it's time to break silence. Today is a world is seeing unprecedented event, a thing called war and terrorism. I'm not sure if Dr. King could have predicted this very event, but he definitely saw a very vivid trend and vicious cycle of violence that the US was involved in. Today, war with Iraq is imminent. Diplomacy, in the words of President Bush, will not work. And the war and terrorism may last for years. Dr. King criticized his own government for perpetuating and encouraging violence because the simplest answer has been to take up arms. The only thing that we have gotten out of this is that it tears countries, it kills children, and annihilates the infrastructures. The land of Babylon, or Iraq as we call it today, once had the lowest children mortality rate in the world. Now has one of the highest infant mortality rate and the cancer rate and the worst resources in the world after the Gulf War. Apparently, the destruction that Iraq suffered once is not enough, as our government is ready once again to invade the war-torn country that even the government knows is not a threat to the US, nor does it harbor any terrorist, nor that it's been seen that it harbor any weapon of mass destruction. Within the boundaries of this land, people have not been safe from this war. Not only have the civil rights of people have been violated, but so have basic human rights. Law-abiding folks who have tried to live the American dream have found an American nightmare riddled with the very racism Dr. King tried to fight. Yet the Jim Crow laws have once again come back disguised as US, USA Patriot Act and Home Security Act, which forces only one group of 
one group of people from a specific background to register with the INS and at times suffer arrest when trying to comply with the law. American citizens are being spied on through phone lines and it is said that every keystroke is recorded now by a secret organization that gets unlimited amount of funding from unknown resources while there are Americans that are jobless, homeless, and do not know where tomorrow's bread comes from. Dr. King made it a point that domestic problems were directly affected by foreign policy. Money that goes to war does not feed the poor. In fact, this causes the poor to rise up because they resent those who have money and the poor rise up domestically and internationally, whether in the streets of San Francisco or Washington or in Iraq or in the occupied territories. Because injustice cannot last, no matter how many hippo weapons it has. We in the US should not support injustice and oppressive regimes. We did in the past, and we continue to do so today. The US must allow the people, every people, to make a choice on their own. We once imposed and backed Saddam Hussein and Osama bin Laden, and we still today support Mr. Sharon. Our president, our president even referred to him as a man of peace. Let us speak for the poor, the oppressed, the voiceless, the weak, and support them until they can get back on their feet. This is not in, in any way an unpatriotic activity. Rather, it is a reassurance that we all belong to fraternity of humanity, regardless of our ethnic background, religion, gender, or color. Let us keep Dr. King's spirit alive by teaching our children a different way of conflict resolution. War is definitely not the answer. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Mayor? <laughs> well, uh, <coughs> a lot of people watching this program, um, listening to Hamza, would probably think that we're it's some kind of a forum on Iraq, or it's a forum on the Middle East, or something like that. And they see the placard that says it's about Martin Luther King. How do they put that together? And I think Hamza did put it together. Mm -hmm. there, is yeah. a, there is, there is uh, in this speech, which was given uh, 36 years ago, um, it, was given, it was given at a time uh, that people thought that King, by, bring, by, by associating the civil rights movement in this country with the anti-war movement, uh, was going to uh, hurt his cause. Instead, I think what it has done is it brings to us today uh, an echo of reality, really. What, what it does is it, it synthesizes some things for ordinary Americans, Americans from all backgrounds. Um, Every one of us sitting here today uh, has ancestors that came from someplace else. This is a country that, unique in the world, represents the world. And so it's legitimate for us to take our principles uh, that we were found, that upon which we were founded and apply them to the present reality. And that's what King was doing. I mean, he, was, he may have been talking about Vietnam, but he was talking to us about Iraq. He was talking to us about social justice in this country. He was talking to us about jobs. He was talking to us about the impact on the economy, the impact on, the, on social cohesion. When you have a government that replaces democracy um, and replaces, uh, I, excuse me, I, I, I can't speak when there's an interruption from the director. <laughs> um, democracy, um, on the one hand, inclusion, um, uh, values which are so important to us, and on the other hand, uh, corporatism, militarism, and huge investments in war. Mm -hmm. I mean, just look at the present situation. I think if Dr. King were here today, all he'd have to do is change a few words in this speech. Right. He could just mm -hmm. change, he could just take the mm -hmm. word Vietnam and yeah. put Iraq. Absolutely. You know, he could, he could if he Absolutely. wanted to, he could just, he could, and then he'd be, he'd probably be saying, without, without even missing a step, uh, you know, where was the right to vote in Florida? For so many people that were have, today would be still part of his movement, mm -hmm. 
Where, where is, where's the money for social justice in this country when we look at the fact that 30 days of military, of military buildup in Iraq, the cost of that would wipe out California's budget deficit. There'd be, I mean, we could take that money and use it uh, for our own country. Instead, what's happening is you have these fleets sitting offshore, burning up gas, burning up manpower and woman power. Mm -hmm. You have people that are serving in what we're told is a volunteer military. Mm -hmm. But when King talked about the draft and talked about the sons of the poor, and now today the daughters of the poor going, mm -hmm. we say, well, we've eliminated the draft. You know, we have an all military, for, uh, an all volunteer military. Mm -hmm. But think about it. What that means is we're saying to people, if you are a minority, the way to get ahead in society is to join the military. And then what do we do? We say, well, we're going to now put you in harm's way. We're going to experiment on you with depleted uranium. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think if King were here today, he'd be just adding these things to the list because it's a continuum. Uh, 36 years later, what has changed? What has changed? I think, I think people like me that now have grandchildren, but who could remember when we were reading this speech 36 years ago, you know, we had children then, now we have grandchildren. What has changed? Uh, what has been learned? All of a sudden now we're going to repeat trickle-down economics. We're going to repeat, we're going to repeat invasions abroad. We're going to repeat foreign um, conquest, you know? I mean, it's, it's really <clears throat> sobering. I'll tell you, I'll be thinking about these things on Saturday in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, okay. Thank you, Terry. Right. Well, great. we have a couple of very excellent presentations, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm sure we'll all have something to say. I, I uh, by the way, the uh, college I work at is Solano College. I did. Mm -hmm. oh, you revealed it. Right. I, I <laughs> dang my, uh, one of my bosses down there. But I, I do want to say that uh, I think one of the uh, important things about uh, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King and this speech and other speeches <coughs> I, I use quite a bit in, in classes uh, is the, the fact that uh, his words are, uh, are as appropriate today as they were then. Mm -hmm. You can see that readily. And I think Ken made some very, very uh, astute points when he compared some of the things today where, where there isn't much progress. I would say this, that uh, Martin Luther King would be very disturbed today. Uh, of course, you know, he would have been fighting right on up today, and maybe he would have uh, been able to, uh, being a powerful uh, speaker for pre peace and, and social justice, he may have, we may have made more progress, perhaps. Who knows? But I think he would be very disturbed because uh, we, in many respects, have not made much progress. As a matter of fact, we've probably made giant steps backwards. At least that's my view. Uh, he, one of the things as a teacher uh, that I think is important, and it's very important in this speech that you gave us to mm -hmm. look at, uh, that Tim Malone passed on to you, mm -hmm. is the, the profound truths in the speech. The mm -hmm. profound truths that were lacking. Uh, now remember, this is the 1960s, and here we're back up into the, uh, we're at the new century now. Mm -hmm. In the 1960s, we were not only going through a, a civil rights and social justice revolution in the midst of a horrible war, but we were going through an educational revolution. All of a sudden, thanks to people like King and Cesar and people, but uh, King was very, very important, we began to realize that we have not told the truth about American history, that we made uh, the United States always look like the great world liberator, mm -hmm. the great first revolutionary power that really showed a colonial power what's what. And we set this wonderful, this wonderful thing in motion and then began to rewrite history and to make revolution a dirty word. You know, and I think King was able to throw that out and, 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 and because of the civil rights movement, we were able to make changes in education and these profound truths began to become uh, part of our curriculum in many of the schools, in the, in, and this was a very important impact on the part of King. Now, this speech is uh, profound, too, because it points out a very important thing about Vietnam. Many people in the early 60s, when we were uh, well in, in, into Vietnam, we were well into Vietnam as soon as World War II ended, as soon as uh, Franklin D. Roosevelt died. Uh, the anti-colonial policy of the United States switched to the Cold War in a, uh, a very anti-colonial position, so much so, as he points out, here we go and uh, practically finance the French uh, readmittance into, into Vietnam with yeah. billions of dollars. Mm -hmm. 
And of course now, uh, today, uh, as we see Iraq, and we see this move to try to protect what once was uh, colonial Western controlled land, we see the same parallel. We see, hey, we're trying to hold on. Uh, sure, Iraq is independent and has done some good things, like Tom's have pointed out. They, they really, and they were once our ally. But all of a sudden, as he says, an enemy is just as capable of being uh, an ally one minute, and we mm -hmm. change very quickly. And he points that mm -hmm. out in the speech, which I think is very important. Here we are now uh, seeing Iraq as uh, an enemy because we need something Iraq has. And I know many people like to deny the uh, value of oil and so on and so forth. But it's pretty apparent uh, that, uh, as he says in here, the United States, who were uh, the strong liberator-oriented country that were supposedly liberating the Vietnamese, were really the pals of the landlord class mm -hmm. against those who wanted to be liberated. Mm -hmm. And here we are again, the pal of the oil class and opposed to those we'd like to see liberated. We think by uh, some of our tactics that somebody's going to get mad at uh, Saddam Hussein and they're going to overthrow him, but just like we hope that something uh, in Vietnam would happen. Never happened. Never happened at all. Uh, he made a very important statement that I wrote down myself, that uh, war is the enemy of the poor. Yes, yes. And I think mm -hmm. that we've both, yes, yes, uh, yes, yes, uh, uh, Hansa and Ken have commented on this. And you know, it, it seems to me like uh, um, that's so true. The, uh, the United States government, because of inaction, historically, was at war with America's poor. Mm -hmm. They were at war with the people they enslaved. What about the wars with the Native Americans? And they, re they, they incarcerated them into reservations in which they're still uh, living. Not that, the, that they yeah. might war off, but I mean, the point is, initially, those were prison camps. They incarcerated the Japanese. They made sure that the ghettos and barrios in the United States stayed just that, with, with laws that deprived these people of social justice. And so King, you know, he, he knew what war was because his own country, like you said, he was willing to, well, you, you oppose your own country declaring war against yourself, wouldn't you? I mean, do any of us want the United States to be honest? Well, I want to tell you the United States is about to be honest. The Patriot Act and the Homestead Act are acts to try to deny the basic Bill of Rights. Mm -hmm. The very thing that, that the United States government denied Indians, denied uh, African Americans, denied the Asians that came over, which strictly came over here for uh, work, denied after the uh, Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo, denied the Mexican people who chose to be citizens here and was able to get most of their land from them by hook or crook. So they've, been decla they've declared war. The United States government supports this corporate colonial activity that, that keeps people in chains. And I think that he's pointing out, King is as relevant today as ever. He talks about uh, the millions of people we killed in Vietnam with poisons and things like that. Well, what about the bombing of the sewage plants, the bombing of the water supply, and the 600,000 women and children and aged people who have died in Iraq based upon United States constant bombing, and we're not even at war? So it seems to me like, uh, if I had to say, King would be very, very angry today. He would be speaking out on a daily basis. And uh, <laughs> in his marches, he'd be at San Francisco this Saturday, yeah, big time. Right, well, the right speech up is there already written. He's written the speech. Yeah. yeah. And we, we, <laughs> definitely, we definitely could, uh, could, um, could use it. But I, I think, uh, I think uh, reading the speech again really uh, mm -hmm. uh, shaped my speaking, and I think uh, calling the United States uh, hypocritical in its behavior. Uh, I'm not afraid to do that, and I think that uh, it needs to be done straightforward. Thank uh, you. And now, Hannah? I'm Hannah Bieberstein, and among many other activities in the city, I'm a member of Beit Havarim. And I'm speaking today as a Jew, and as I'm taking the position of one segment of the Jewish community. I'm not speaking for Beth Havarim, and the Jewish community is very, very divided on the subject on which I'm going to speak. The biggest problem, obviously, for Jews is the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, obviously. Mm -hmm. And um, 
Martin Luther King's words are very profound and very relevant to one segment of the Jewish community that has a special plan for dealing with this problem. And so that's what I'm going to go into a little bit, the meaning that it has for us and the leaders of this movement refer to Martin Luther King explicitly and cite him and base their opinions on his works. Okay, the, me the message of Martin Luther King has always found resonance in the Jewish community. Rabbi Abraham Heschel, one of the most renowned modern scholars and articulators of Jewish uh, spirituality, was a close friend of Martin Luther King and marched with him. It is no coincidence that the disciple of Rabbi Heschel Rabbi Michael Lerner has become a leading spokesman for an alternative approach to the solution of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict today. He has founded an organization, the Tikkun Community, dedicated to peace through reconciliation between Palestinian and Jews. He states explicitly that his approach is based on the beliefs of Dr. King. I can do no better to illustrate this point than quote Rabbi Lerner's six points as articulated in his new book, Healing, Israel slash Palestine. And the first point is ending the oppression of the Palestinian people. Second point, ensuring Israel's survival and security and eliminating terror as a daily reality of life in Israel. Three, recrediting Judaism and the Jewish tradition in the eyes of Jews and non-Jews who wrongfully identify insensitive or immoral Israeli policies with Judaism. And at the same time, and I think Hamza will appreciate this, Recre uh, recrediting Islam in the eyes of people around the world who wrongly identify Islam with a small group of Islamic extremists. Four, protecting the Jewish people from the growing global anger and anti-Semitism that is being fanned by Israel's treatment of Palestinians. Five, and this one is straight out of Martin uh, Luther King, as far as I'm concerned. Developing an ability on both sides to recognize the legitimacy of the other's story and the other's perception and learn how to see the world through the other's eyes as well as one's own. This, in turn, creates the precondition for the possibility of an approach to reconciliation based on generosity, kindness, open-heartedness and a genuine desire to make the world safe and fulfilling to both the Israeli and Palestinian people, thus defeating the impulse to terror, suicide, murder, or obliteration of the other. And the last one is recrediting the global hopes for a world of peace and justice, which are undermined by views that see this particular struggle as an example of the intractable nature of antagonism, which supposedly proves the futility of trying to heal or change the world. And I certainly personally find a lot of resonance in Martin Luther King's approach to the solutions that this movement uh, has in mind for the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Thank you. I actually appreciate every word you said. That's, mm. uh, I appreciate every, every item. Well, I the, think we are on the same the, wavelength. Yeah, and uh, I, I want to mm. tell you, every rally I went through, for the Palestinian, I didn't go for anyone for Israel, but I went for everyone in Palestinian, I had a lot of Jewish people going with me. Yes. And they, I have a lot of Jewish friends, by the way. That's right. So I, I'm not uh, at all, uh, so I, I know a lot of Jewish people are really sympathizing with the Palestinian, because a lot of them refuse oppression. Yeah. That's right. It, it is, uh, this viewpoint though, points out something which I personally feel and this movement feels, that both sides have a legitimate viewpoint. Yeah. And somehow, yeah. 
and both sides have done great wrongs, both sides. Mm -hmm. And somehow there has to be a reconciliation, the way Martin Luther King says right. you have to see the other's viewpoint mm -hmm. and you have to be able to live. It's no good blaming, you know, mm -hmm. constantly. This is bad, you are bad, that's mm -hmm. bad. It doesn't get you anywhere. Absolutely. Well, you know, it's interesting. Uh, but this is not the topic. Well, the Israeli conflict it, is not. But the you know, we're, it's we're, part we're of the story. It's, it's, part, it's part, of part of the story. It's part of the story, and we're yeah. in, and we're trying to we're trying to tell that story through through the words and the acts and of the wisdom Martin Luther of King. King. Mm -hmm. And you know, I would think that one of the things he'd be doing today is pointing out um, oh. dichotomies, pointing out where we ourselves know the truth, but we don't carry it out in other places. For example, right. uh, our own government. Today, a representative of the American government announced uh, that it was possible that we would extend a hand of economic assistance to North Korea mm -hmm. and that uh, we'd like to see some cooperation from them. Now, that's called uh, exchange. That's right. called that's a, an attempt at reconciliation. Mm -hmm. And it's in complete contradiction to what's going on in Iraq. Mm -hmm. It's right. almost as though we don't listen to our... Uh, you know, it, it's it's a very it's a very strange thing. It's almost like you know, if it was a person, they'd say you were mentally ill. You know, because you, you just you just don't have you got two different yeah. uh, views of reality that yeah. they clash. Yeah. And I think that uh, King would be looking to the looking to the strengths mm -hmm. in negotiation. Yes. The strengths of peace. Yeah. He says in this speech that there's nothing soft. There's nothing soft about what the world's great religions have long said about uh, about what it means to love. Well, exactly. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. I think unfortunately uh, our kids today when they go play some of these video games and everything else, there's a, th yeah. a theme of violence, a theme yeah, right. of Absolutely. a theme of, uh, of retribution and uh, that that somehow uh, action um, has to be uh, has to be uh, negative yes. and proactive and you attack. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, um, and I think King cites Islam, Judaism, Christianity, Buddhism. Right. I mean, he goes right down the line. Uh, they all come back to something to very center. central to his speech. Exactly. Which is actually, uh, it actually works politically. If, it if, does. If countries are willing to do it. And I was struck, struck tonight by watching um, Jim Lehrer's program. The, mm -hmm. Is that uh, on the one hand, uh, uh, the president saying he's sick and tired. Yeah. Yes. Sick and tired. <laughs> That people aren't agreeing with him. That's what he's sick and tired of. <laughs> yeah. oh, yeah. And meanwhile, the, the attorney general, the uh, secretary general of the UN, is just saying, "We are not talking about war. We're yeah, talking about inspection. We're yeah. talking about, you know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, let the voice, the voice of King. Mm -hmm. um, I'll just let the viewers make up their own minds of, of, of I think, who, who's reading the historic text the right way. Mm -hmm. but, I think that on that uh, point, though, the North, uh, North uh, Korean yeah. point that you made. Um, the idea that the United States is willing to give something to get some cooperation. Uh -huh. uh, I think that that profound truth that I was talking about that King would be able to point out to, as a preface to that is the fact that the United States shortly after Bush was elected uh, withdrew from uh, nuclear international controls mm -hmm. to a, a major a major nuke treaty mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, that was of course part of the policies of this government and yet, uh, when uh, North Korea uh, tried to do it, uh, all of a sudden, you know, yeah. I mean, uh, or long before that, it became one of his axis. Double standard. Powers, you know, <laughs> double standard. And I think we have to point out that uh, the United States uh, has its plans to fight a war uh, in Iraq. And that North Korea is kind of muddying up the water, so yeah, they're willing exactly. to play the old British balance of power mm -hmm. game mm -hmm. uh, to try to checkmate, uh, you know. Nor and I think that uh, the King would be pointing out these hypocr hypocrisies, this consistent mm -hmm. support for uh, the old colonial guard and the same old tactic, mm -hmm. you know. I think uh, the frustration. The good thing about King is he kept a strong optimism. And the, the rough thing about myself is I keep a strong pessimism <laughs> yes. because I feel I we've say. most of us have been infected by the mm -hmm. uh, by the disease of uh, of this game of hate and love. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do you you you've got yeah, both right. diseases now? How do you you know? And which one is stronger? He says toward the end, which I think is is a tremendous you know plot passage where the oceans of history are made turbulent by the ever rising tides of hate. 
Well, you know, the yeah. tides of hate yeah, go up overcome. with every kind of bigger type it's of very hard device to, to use yeah. to kill people yeah, it's very and hard. to get your way. Mm -hmm. Let it's me interrupt a, yeah, at yeah. this moment to, to let uh, viewers know that they uh, wish to call in. This would be a good time. Uh, 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 we can accept the calls and, uh, as this discussion uh, uh, continues. I just want to well, agree with, with uh, both two gentlemen in there. Uh, how can we expect our youth, our people, to be not violent while our government deal everything with violence? It just takes arms on everything. So I think we, we're really giving the wrong message to our generation day in mm -hmm. and day out. And uh, if, we, if we go back, reflect on uh, Prophet Joseph, may peace be upon him, uh, he the same very people who harmed him and wanted to get rid of him, mm -hmm. he actually forgave him. Mm -hmm. and, and he told him, I forgive you. And from then, just peace settled out. There, there were no problems. So we can always go back to our history, see so what war does accomplish and what peace does accomplish. Right. So it, it's obviously we can, we can definitely do better if we find other solution than war. Mm -hmm. the, 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 there are many, many other ways we can sit down mm -hmm. and give and take as uh, yeah. uh, my brother Ken Wagstaff here yeah. pointed out. <laughs> and and we, we must really uh, get away from the war attitude. This, it's not getting us anywhere. Mm -hmm. well, do you think that uh, there's an element of uh, a desire of world domination uh, 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 on the part of the, uh, well, the whether it's the U.S. or uh, the powerful at any well, rate, the, the word is that, that the, know, through the through down <laughs> through the ages, haven't there always been certain uh, uh, movements for toward world domination, uh, whether it's Napoleon or Alexander the Great, uh, isn't that sort of like a dream you by the why? powerful? Tansy, I won't put this country in that category. I mean, don't don't misinterpret what okay. I from, just for myself now. I see. Uh, this I, I said this this country, unique among all the nations, mm -hmm. represents a cross section of the earth. Mm -hmm. Yes, everybody's true. here. True. Right. And at the same time, we're the United States. I mean, you're looking at it. Right. I mean, uh, we elected. Oh, I, sh I take that back. We not did not elect like George Bush. Let's see what did we do. <laughs> somebody, somebody appointed him. I don't know. But anyway, he's the president. Yeah, don't go and too he far. Represents, <laughs> he represents an important. You know, we have a power structure. We have an executive. Right. Somebody has to. Somebody Democracy. has to put that together. Yeah, right. But who, whose message should that person carry? Exactly. The message of the American people. Right. Now, right. I will tell you, if you look at the polls, even though they are manipulated at times, mm -hmm. if you talk to people. I, I can't find an overwhelming desire on the part of the United States people mm -hmm. to have hegemony over the world. Mm -hmm. No way. Oh, no, in not fact, the most people. people, most people are proud of the fact that in their lifetimes, the United States has had opportunities for, for domination that it did not take. Mm -hmm. A lot of people defended the previous Bush when he said, all right, we've pushed him out of Kuwait, now we stop. Right. But now all of a sudden, that's not good enough for the young guy. Yeah, we gotta, you know. I think the important mm -hmm. thing, though, is to speak out. I'm a well. I was lucky enough to uh, be able to escape the Holocaust the last mm -hmm. minute in '39. You were. Yeah. yeah. Wow. I'm a Holocaust survivor, yeah. and the one uh, lesson I think uh, that most of us learned is that when your civil liberties and your rights are curtailed, you have to speak out early, either early. Yeah or forget it. You'll never right. get another chance. Yeah, and I do right. want to quote, which I always do, uh, there's a very famous uh, German minister, Martin Niemöller, you may have heard of mm -hmm. him, uh, who later went to the concentration yeah. camp, who illustrates this. He said, in Germany, they came first for the communists. And I didn't speak yeah. up because I wasn't a communist. Mm -hmm. Then they came for the Jews. I didn't speak up because I wasn't a Jew. Then they came for the Catholics, and I didn't speak up because I was a Protestant. Then they came for me, and and that time no one was left to speak up. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the message that, you know, is important to me that you really have to speak up, and you have to speak up now, because, uh, well, events may uh, uh, take place so that later on it's much more difficult or even impossible. Yeah. I uh, just want to comment on your uh, world domination okay. issue in there because I think we can 
we can have the world domination by peace, not by war, by kindness to other people, right. not by fighting them. If we spend uh -huh. half of what, maybe even quarter of what we spend on, on uh, um, last year was $365 billion. Uh -huh. If we spend half that much or quarter that much to, to feed the hungry and help the oppressed, uh -huh. I think we'll have much better stature in the world than what we have now. I Everybody in the world hates us now. Uh -huh. uh, Everybody. Right. Uh, but uh, I think that uh, isn't there a confusion at the top, uh, uh, it, the difference between leadership and domination? It seems mm -hmm. that they're saying we're leading what their behavior is dominating. Uh, and so there's uh, semantics going, uh, uh, well, mm -hmm. the you know, propaganda. But so, so that um, um, it's in a way they are very uh, clever, you know, prop you know uh, propaganda wise, uh, very effective. And, and, and it seems like wrong declared right by popular demand going on or something. And, uh, and it's, it's really strange, but I think the country is uh, coming around. I understand that the poll really shows that the people uh, who support him, they, they like him as a person. It, it seems that he's got a lot of people who like, but they don't like his policies. But they like him. Well, I no, think, whatever. Uh, my mother used to say, when you go to the supermarket, don't go there when you're hungry. Right. Because mm -hmm. you'll buy all the wrong stuff. <laughs> right. And you'll start eating the first thing you see and so on. Right. And I would say, if you're going to make a foreign policy, don't start with fear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think what's happening is a lot of people in the United States, some of them for the first time in their lives, mm -hmm. on September 11th of, uh, of 2001, felt fear. I agree. That's true. That's and true. And yes. fear, fear is, uh, yes. I think, difficult to overcome. Mm -hmm. And I think the first step, though, is to realize that you should not be making permanent decisions based upon what you feel in terms right. of fear. Mm -hmm. right. And you have to really assess, well, now, what are we afraid of? And I think most Americans, when you tell them that, uh, that uh, Iraq did not attack the World Trade Center, mm -hmm. they have to pause for a moment. Because their That's fear right. wants, to say, wants to strike out right. at somebody. Right. Mm -hmm. Or do but something. But then you say to them, mm -hmm. and then you say, you know, there's someone you don't understand, whether it's the North Koreans, whether it's the Iraqis. Mm -hmm. You know, the first thing we've got to do is we have to see the strength we have and, and, uh, and be confident in that strength and not be afraid. And we can then do what George Bush's father used to always talk about. You know, he talked about a new world order. Now, that used to kind of scare me. And then I'd read, well, no, what they really mean is that we have the opportunity now to build up yeah, the world. Yeah. Uh, we, don't have to have to, we don't have to waste all this money on defense. That's mm -hmm. what I... You hoped it meant. But, yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, you know, now, now it has, you know, words like world order and words like homeland mm -hmm. and so on yeah. have a different cast. They, yes. They sound like something out of the 30s. Mm -hmm. No, I think, I think you're that, right. Uh, it's fear. You know, I yes. think that what you're saying is true. I think that the, the, one of the things we're looking for is a practical way of of uh, addressing this so that, that the people of the United States are informed. It took a long time in Vietnam when it was rolling along before the press was forced to, to start talking about it. And, and I think that in some ways the education system contributed because the Civil Rights Movement forced this, what I called earlier, more profound, profound truths. And one of the things I feel uh, to some extent is lacking even in today's educational system, is that the profound truths have been watered down to a great yes. extent. Mm -hmm. Like I would uh, point mm -hmm. as an example, the uh, social studies standards in the Cal state of California have been watered down, and um, the role of women, for example, is somewhat reduced. Uh, yes. Certain minority positions have been reduced, and mm -hmm. uh, the former governor of the state of California involved, you know, and, uh, and, and Martin Luther mm -hmm. King would, of course, oppose this, but I do feel very strongly that we have to have a base of knowledge. We have to have the truth. All we right, can't do the problem. We have a phone call. Oh, fine. Yeah. Hello? Hello. Hi, how are you? Oh, fine. Thank you. Uh, do you have a question for us? Yes. Um, I just wanted to thank you for your presentation. Um, I think you have a question for us. Yes. I just wanted to address um, the issue of having more knowledge that the um, gentleman just brought up um, and the role that the media pro plays in that. Uh, because it is my view that the corporate-sponsored media has not been portraying uh, the, uh, the truth 
about the war on terrorism. I think we seem to be getting a lot of regurgitation from what the army officials keep saying what, uh, or, or what the White House says. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much, and uh, we'll see uh, how the response go. All right. Uh, well, I just want to thank you. Yeah. I was going to say uh, directly uh -huh. to what this uh, uh, young lady says. Uh, if we are dealing with teaching our students about what Iraq and the countries in the Middle East, and they're becoming informed about what's happening, and they find out that at one time Iraq was an ally of the United States, that a lot of the so-called weapons we're looking for were given to them by the United States, that at one time Saddam Hussein was a pal against the war against another Middle Eastern country. I think that's the kind of thing that has to be brought out. They can't keep talking about the Battle of Gettysburg when we got issues like mm -hmm. this. And that's what I mean by profound truths. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think this lady's getting I, at. I see. Anyone else? Did you? Yeah, well, well, go ahead. Anna has something she wants. Well, I think our whole way of thinking is incorrect. War on terrorism is not like any other war. We, I mean, the whole thinking has to be different. There's no beginning. How do you know where it began? How do you know when it ends? It's just an entirely new concept that our leaders and probably our population hasn't dealt with and can't really fathom fully. It's not a war. I mean, yeah. in the way we talk about war. I think Hannah, you really have put your finger on a big problem now for not only for the American people uh, and for its leaders, but it's a problem in terms of how uh, we educate people. The caller mm -hmm. was talking about the, the role of the media. Mm -hmm. Now, it's very easy for the media to adopt this war paradigm mm -hmm. because A, you get good guys and bad guys. Exactly, uh, B, which everybody likes. Stuff. You get an mm -hmm. exciting uh, That's right. uh, video mm -hmm. of aircraft carriers and jets and all that. Heroes. And uh, <laughs> you can get people on, uh, you can get the, the, the doves and the hawks to argue and so on. Mm -hmm. And as a matter of fact, uh, what I think some Americans understand is that terrorism in this world is to a large extent an outgrowth of poverty and despair. Of course. Yes. Uh, it, 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 uh, we are breeding new terrorists mm -hmm. every day. Mm -hmm. And I say we, I mean in terms of you just, you just took a strip around the globe and you've got, you've got the haves and the have-nots. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You've got the countries to the south. You've got, uh, we not only have a third world, but, but uh, I think we're developing a fourth world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're developing people who are almost stateless. They don't have right. any... Correct. Uh, there was an article recently that I was reading about what's happening in Africa with some of these uh, with some of these rebel armies that mm. really they don't have an ideology other than destruction. They're mm. striking out because right. they come out of these great uh, yeah. masses of ur urban areas, yeah. dehumanized that aren't even cities. Been being dehumanized. If, what, if if the if a new world order means anything, it means that we've got to take this incredible um, prosperity mm -hmm. that uh, Europe and and, uh, and the West and the United mm -hmm. States and the rest of the Western world, mm -hmm. the so-called first world, have yes, and figure out a new Marshall Plan for the future. If we don't do that, mm -hmm. uh, then you know I think that some of the things that have happened thus far are going to look like a picnic. Mm -hmm. What do you think know. about this? Uh, the um, great uh, focus on our national security and uh, what, as you know, I was concerned about the, should the Constitution, uh, uh, civil rights and all of it be suspended along with the Ten Commandments uh, for the sake of uh, uh, our national security and is, and is our yes, national sir. security too important to leave to God? Uh, I mean, what's the role of the people with moral values, religious leaders, uh, uh, how do we reconcile it with what's going on? It seems like we're going, yeah, you, you have made very good point. Uh, under the current administration, I think there is a strong wind of racism start to blow our way, really. Mm -hmm. If uh, just the last, uh, last Saturday, Reuters reported there were uh, some racist people in Maine, mm -hmm. in uh, Lewiston, uh, called themselves uh, uh, World Church of Creator. Oh yes. And yes. they, uh, they yeah, there were some Somalis. Them. Yeah, we know about oh. them. Yes. There were some Somalis, and they they just feel that the white people are fed up to have all these Somalis coming in here. So so and 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 this this uh, this uh, laws that comes in where you can tap on people's phone and tap in their emails and and, and yeah. I'm, I'm, oh, yeah. I'm I'm honestly afraid of my oh, own I self am too. Yes. I can't I can't 
you know, when anybody talk to me on the phone, I'm, I'm very careful what I'm saying. I can't open my mouth anymore. Uh, right. And and uh, if I, even when I'm here, when I'm talking, I don't know what's going to happen to me after I get out of here. Mm -hmm. So, and, and oh. a lot of Muslims feel the same way. I'm not the yeah, only I one. I understand. Mm -hmm. and, but now look, uh, I think, again, let's get back to the problem of fear. Uh, I think, I think uh, I'll give George Bush credit for a couple of points that he made early on in the, in the terrorist yeah. crisis when he actually stated that we as a country um, are, represent all faiths. Mm -hmm. um, he, went, he, has been, he went directly uh, to Islamic leaders. In yes, he did. Yes, he did. recently, and uh, uh, what's the key is, is uh, Islamic holiday, where he, he showed up at... Uh, Eid al-Fatr, yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. And he was there in Washington. Yeah. I mean, and if, you know, if somebody no, representing uh, Mr. Bush is listening yeah. right now, I'll just say, hey, you know, you get, you get big numbers when you do that. You know? he tried. People want yeah. that kind of leadership. Yeah. That's the kind of president we want. Right. We don't want a president that says that he has to have his spies uh, find out what we're doing with our computer keyboards, yeah. you know? Yeah. Uh, we need a president that I think uh, would speak for the best and the, and, the, and the strengths of the American people. People all over the world, I disagree with something you said. You said everybody hates us. Actually, there's a lot of people that hate us, I know that. But there's a lot of people, it's not so much hate as it is deep frustration. Mm -hmm. Frustration with right. what they yeah. know that yeah. this country is capable of. Can do. That yeah. they know what we can do and what we did in Europe and what we've done uh, mm -hmm. that we could expand the Peace Corps. Uh, That's right. You, you know, we, they've yeah. seen Americans at their best and they want us to go there again. I yeah. think that they like American people but uh, dislike what our foreign policy, right. uh, what the corporations are doing. And um, when uh, the uh, political officials uh, say that uh, we are pr uh, protecting um, uh, American values or, or um, many things they assign as American, they're really talking about business interests. Uh, they're not uh, you know, talking about values. And so I think that's uh, 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 what uh, America is, is about. So, and, and it's not between the corp their corporate wishes, excuse me, the corporate wishes yeah. and the American wishes uh, of the public are two different things. And, but uh, uh, politicians don't make that distinction, um, you know, what the oil companies want and what the people want. Yeah, well, there was one thing, too, the, uh, the same George Bush that made these nice statements uh, also hasn't done much to uh, uh, stop mm. incarcerating Exactly, and and profiling them beyond yeah. uh, you know without courts, without uh, mm -hmm. without due process, um, and I just think that see, we have it seems to be a, a political balance for him. We give him a kudo, but he's still locking innocent people right. and holding yeah, them. Yeah, and in. profiling right. and yeah. hello, uh, hello, is there someone there? Hello. Hello, this is Mike. Uh, all right. Do you do you have a, a question for us? Thank you for calling. Do you have a question? Yes, I do. I'm enjoying the show. Thank you very much for putting it on. I think oh, we'll need to see more. Thank you. Um, and I'm looking for a little help from you folks, perhaps, maybe some guidance. Uh, most of the people that I've talked to... Could you talk a little louder? Yes. Most of the people I've talked to do not agree with Bush. Um, they don't agree with his policies or the direction he's taking us. Uh, I don't think anybody is convinced that Bush is actually evil or malicious, but uh, perhaps that he's just lost his way and needs guidance. Um, some of the comments have been made that he's, people are reacting or operating out of fear. Uh, and we're certainly getting, there's that. Uh, there's also influence being provided by corporate America, as somebody suggested earlier, and, uh, and by the media. And certainly the elected officials are influenced by the desire to keep their elected positions. Um, what's missing is uh, some kind of mechanism for the, uh, for the people who have an opinion to express their opinion. I certainly know that a lot of people are feeling like this is something that's happening to them. They feel disenfranchised. We seem to have lost the mechanism and the democracy for the, uh, for the people to express their will coherently and, uh, and plainly to their elected officials. Can you folks perhaps maybe address some of the mechanisms that are available for us now that uh, uh, might be uh, effective? Uh, all right, we have about a couple of minutes left, and so we'll uh, vote. Uh, see what uh, we can do with that. Thank you for calling. Uh, I'm going I'm to point out one thing to the caller, and that is that people should not underestimate the power of the pen 
just for openers now. There's a lot of other things you can do. Mm -hmm. You can be in marches. You can make sure you vote. Mm -hmm. um, you can speak. You can you can uh, speak out against hate at home and at the workplace. You know, you can you can tell people openly uh, that uh, you know what you want this country to be. But if you write a letter, I used to work in the state capitol, and my boss used to tell me. He'd say, give me that postcard. I want to read it. I'd say, it's just a postcard. I mean, I was going to give you an analysis. I don't want the analysis. I want the postcard. <laughs> you look at the postcard. Do you know if somebody writes a postcard, the rule of thumb is that there's another 300 people that didn't have time to write that agree. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm telling people, you know, for 23 cents or whatever it is now, I guess they raised the rates, 27 cents, whatever it is. Um, 37 minutes. Hold, our, hold the Congress's feet to the fire. You know, they, they said the president's supposed to work with the UN. Well, let's see if he will. And mm -hmm. just because they passed a war resolution, that's not a blank check. Nice. Write a postcard. And uh, Mike, uh, Mike, write a postcard. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, one other question about that. Uh, postcards are effective. What about emails, and phone calls? Yeah, you know, especially phone calls, you know yeah. those. Uh, uh, how effective are they? Well, I don't know because I mean I, I didn't work at the Capitol. Pers when it was personally, I think, I think that uh, <laughs> I think they uh, the internet has open has been very yes. valuable to yeah. people who are opposed to war and, and in favor of right. uh, right. King's points of view of working and taking a stand, being courageous. I think. Uh, there's a lot of information you get that you don't get in the newspaper. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, you have to be careful. You don't know be when careful. it's just solid opinion, but I mean, what is the newspaper? Yes. And uh, the, certainly it's beating a lot of the news. Now, there are some uh, radio shows, uh, which, such as KPFA, mm -hmm. and uh, some that really have very, very fine reporting that do give another point of view and other than the government's. But I think that Ken's right, the power of the pen uh, not only the writing letters, writing letters to the editor of your local newspaper, mm -hmm. calling in, such as Mike and the mm -hmm. other lady did, mm -hmm. oh, well. and are listening, are involved, mm -hmm. and I think having panels, forums, mm -hmm. and All now, right. of course, you know, I'm just going to say, uh, yeah. uh, you know, well, bringing resolutions to local yeah. right. city All government. Right. Well, that's like very that. good. We're down to uh, final minute. Uh, what uh, uh, well, this uh, very great uh, discussion, and I'm uh, happy right. that. You're my guest, and, and you've done a terrific <laughs> job. You. All right, your Thank final you. word. Uh, Tansy, you know, I want to tell you, you make a great moderator because uh, sure. because you know we're all going to keep talking. <laughs> 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 you, managed, you managed right there to bring everything to a nice close, <laughs> even if we fade out. Uh, Martin Luther King was spied upon by the FBI. Yes. Mm -hmm. Martin Luther King was a victim of some of the of, of of some things which we thought the government had promised they would not do anymore, mm -hmm. and right. in the USA Patriot Act, they've announced they're going to do it again. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. Uh, yeah. and I think people should know that on February 5th, the Davis City Council is going to take a look at the USA mm -hmm. Patriot Act. Great, um, mm -hmm. Councilman That's Harrington is sponsoring a resolution for the council to look at. Yeah. Okay. The Human Relations right. Commission voted in favor of it. We did, and mm -hmm. we would ask uh, people to get down there. You know, uh, now yeah. this is this is right out of Martin Luther King because he was the victim of it. We're, we're in fade out. Yeah. Yeah. We're in thank fade you out. very much. Thank you very much. You have faded out. I came in very Wait, nervous, yeah. actually, but you guys yeah. made me very comfortable. Like, yes, yeah, wonderful. Yes, and then I really, I, I, done a yeah, that's right. right. I really appreciate being in here with you. Thank you very much Thank for you. giving Thank the you. opportunity. You, you forgot impressive. about the camera, didn't you? you <laughs> I, didn't, about it. I didn't even look at it. That's oh. what it's all about. Yeah, yeah, I didn't even look at it. Forget about it. I had to look at it because Kent's face kept popping out. I have my hair cut off today. What are you talking about?